Well, when you've got a surname and some kind of commentator is reading your surname off a list and they mangle it, why routine, uh, we routine -y. then suddenly the eyes land on you and they're singing and they're going, whoa, you know, this guy's a Māori, you know? Simon Wirutini was a dominant force in New Zealand skiing for over 15 years and introduced Te Māori to the slopes of the world, competing in four Olympic Games along the way. But how does a kid from Rotorua become a world-class ski racer? I caught the eye of this guy who was a master. So he saw this young, precocious New Zealand style, which was indelible Māori. It moved like lightning, it was like an eel, it was, it was amazing, it was shamanic for him. He said to my dad, this guy, he's got it. Every time the weather was bad, I got shown um, videos and ski movies. It just was running into my mind and then suddenly, almost like the Matrix, I would do it. The mimicry, um, the visualization, the emulation, those were the skills which came naturally to me and I could immediately convert when I saw the very best top guys in the world doing it. I suddenly was doing it next minute. Um, by the time I was 12, I won the under 18 New Zealand championships. The passion was bitten in me young. I wanted to go to these places in the world and ski, and if it meant representing the country, and that's what took me there, well, I was going to do it. Uh, I heard about Simon in the early days as a young skier at uh, Whakapapa. So I remember one of the first times I met him at Mount Hutt, and he was wearing like old-fashioned skiing tweeds. I'd never seen anyone dressed like that before. Looking like someone from the, the 20s or 30s. <laughs> no one dressed like that. He had a different style. He legs apart, very balanced on both skis. I've heard uh, people compare him to Alberto Tomba, the famous Italian skier. He had a very similar style. Quite different from other New Zealand skiers, particularly. I aim to stay in control a little bit, but a little bit out of control too. Okay. Got that, Look at that wild yeah. side on you. You're a very, <laughs> yeah. very, very strange man, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it as an absolute compliment. Oh, excellent. 1984, I'm 17, straight out of high school at my first Olympic Games. It's all Yugoslavia behind the Iron Curtain. That's all going to come falling down years later. Kind of hairy. Um, there were helicopters, there were Alsatians everywhere. It was like, it's what you would think about, about being the Iron Curtain. I mean, that rivals Joan Alamu and these All Blacks that are 16. The Jeff Wilsons, the very greatest names of the prodigy athletes in New Zealand. Those feats that I was doing at that time were very up there. While travelling the world to compete on the best slopes was important to him, Wirutine still dominated Ngā Maunga or Aotearoa with his own unique style. The first year that I won the national championships, I wore a moko that I painted on with a crayon. It looked cool, but it wasn't quite right, that first one, because everybody knows, and in hindsight this is quite comical because it was a big mistake, because the Māori art form itself is a negative, not positive, so when you stencil it and colour it in, I should have been shading the other side and then it really would have looked like a moko. I managed to get that right when I sealed the decade in 1996. That was a very good moko. It was so in your face. From 86 until now has been my time, so that's 10 years. To have the mana of your own country is something special. I lived up at Whistler for many years and he would come through Whistler on his way back from races in Europe, like the Olympics or uh, FIS series. He did all this, a lot of traveling without a, without a coach. So he, co he was self-coached to a, to, to a, for a large amount of his career. He would ski around Whistler sometimes with a Maddie, flashing it around and like this, just in training. And he trained very hard, put a lot of time into the gym and uh, that plus his natural abilities. He just had that edge over, over a lot of other skiers. Skiing buzz is a freedom thing. Uh, you can let go of your ego and you merge with nature. <laughs>